having me, can I prepared a slide back um, that I wanted to quickly show you for my presentation. Okay, so uh, yeah, me too. I would, I too, I would like to have uh, had a coffee with Julian and everybody um, in Paris. And uh, so it's very unfortunate. I think that we're having this extremely important debate now uh, all the time in various circles in five minute uh, broadcastings. Uh, so we really need to sit down at some point and get together and talk about it more extensively. And also, I, I couldn't uh, restrain myself enough, so I have a, a long slide back. I'll try to get through it in five or six minutes, uh, so bear with me. My problem is absolutely not with sustainability. Uh, so I, I do not challenge at all the very, very important goals that we are talking uh, about. But my beef is with the idea that restrictions of competition would somehow serve that goal. I think it is exactly the opposite. So if we're going to go for restrictions of competition, and the Dutch Competition Authority uh, very actively is trying to, by stretching the competition requirement, then um, we might, I fear actually with the two risks that I will conclude on at the end, that we might do harm to the environmental uh, objectives that we have in mind, rather than, than advance them. Now many uh, legal scholars have thought about these subjects now for some time, and this is a picture that Simon has showed uh, last year in a conference, and, um, and there's, lots of, there's lots of legal scholars in the, in the debate, but it's very fundamentally an economic problem, I think, an economic question that's underlying here, uh, the debate. And Simon has uh, uh, characterized us economists, I think that's, that's us, well, I'm not at the University of Chicago, but we would be, you know, making everything very difficult, while at the same time the world is, uh, the world is drowning, and that would be a mistake. And I, I want to warn for that, because before we go ahead in this direction, we really need to think about whether it is the right tool that we are, that we're pulling out here uh, for the objective, as I said. So I, I'm going to be the skeptical economist, yes, uh, because I think it's important to recognize that the key, the key underlying question here is whether indeed restrictions of competition are going to stimulate sustainability initiatives. Uh, and so it's a, it's a very fundamental premise here of the green antitrust movement that somehow it is. Now, economics certainly, uh, uh, you know, public economics 101, there, is, there can be conflicts between uh, environmental issues or public goods uh, and competition, absolutely. You know, there's externality problems, which are very, very severe, big problems. And the, the standard way of solving them is by internalizing the externalities, and by, but not by restricting competition. Actually, if you restrict competition, for example, if you allow a horizontal agreement amongst competitors, there's no reason at all to think that they would somehow then start internalizing these externalities. Quite the opposite, actually, uh, is the case. And so we've gone quite a, a, a distance along uh, exempt, thinking about exempting cartels on the 1013 if they do sufficient green, and we're already thinking about stretching the compensation requirement in order to make it fit and so on. But from there, it's a small step also to green merger efficiencies. Fred alluded to them already. Um, and also a green abuse of dominance, uh, for example, excluding a polluting uh, rival. And Fred mentioned a polluting uh, a firm that's being snapped up by another in a merger. But we really need to think about the question, why would we need a merger for, for such a, a shift? Why would we expect firms that uh, build up market power uh, dominance uh, and, and by abuse, by excluding, other, uh, by excluding rivals, for example, why would they have an interest at all in investing in, in green? That is a key question. So should we expect, in other words, even put a little green arrow there, so this is the key question, should we expect companies to take more corporate social responsibility in cooperation than they, than they would in competition? And now we focus very much, and I think that is enlightening, we focus on sustainability, uh, more completely on fighting climate change, CO2 reductions, um, but it's of course much wider. Sustainability goal is much wider. We can also talk about animal welfare, for example. Um, but anyway, so one, we have one very concrete example. This is a well-known example from the Dutch Competition Authority. The Dutch Competition Authority went ahead and, and did a fantastic study, it's a thick study available in English, that uh, uh, into an, an agreement that was about the closure of coal-burning electricity plants. It was a reduction of electricity capacity production in the Netherlands by 10%, and the Dutch Competition Authority found out that, uh, calculated, that that would lead to price rises in electricity for the Dutch, um, and that would be around about 75 million euros of extra cost for electricity for the Dutch per year. Uh, and this was a five-year um, uh, five uh, sort of putting, putting ahead of closure of, of coal-burning electricity plants that, that were going to be closed anyways than five years down the line. 75 million. 
And then the competition authority used very sophisticated environmental economics. I mean, and we can do that. It's no problem at all for economists. And calculated that the, uh, the value of the emissions reductions in that case only was uh, 30, 30 million uh, euros a year. So much less than the cost of the electricity increase. And the reason was that the electricity plants would, would, not, would not take their emission rights, and their carbon emission rights that they would not use in the plants in the Netherlands, they would not take them off the market, so they would be floated still on the European uh, emissions trading market. And then they would be bought by somebody else, and then th that just meant that the CO2 emissions reduction uh, th that wasn't had. It was just a replacement of Dutch CO2 emissions to uh, CO2 emissions somewhere else. Okay? And the companies were asked the question, well, could you please take the CO2 emission rights off the market so that there will actually be some CO2 emissions reduction, and then we can value that, and maybe we can, you know, maybe we come out at a higher number than 75 million. And those CO2 emission uh, uh, reductions have a high value, it's a high social value. But the companies refused to do that. They thought that was too expensive, and, and therefore they didn't want to do it. And the Dutch Competition Authority therefore said rightly no. I think rightly because ultimately the green that the companies were proposing to do in, uh, in return for restriction of for being allowed this restriction of competition was just way too little, you know, less than half of what, uh, what the costs were for, for the consumers. And that's all the consumers in the Netherlands. So the same balancing would also apply still now if we would have the stretched uh, compensation criterion that ACM is proposing, because that also would then involve all uh, the Dutch. But I, I won't talk about that uh, now in my five minutes. But let me get to this to the question. So, if we are going to think about this question, are companies doing more in, com in collusion or in cooperation than in competition? We first need to make two basic premises. I think that are reasonable to accept by everybody, and that is that people care about sustainable products. They have a willingness to pay for them. There's lots of literature, and uh, Fred already uh, referred to the recent paper by Aguillon and others, um, but there's much more literature that shows this. People have a willingness to pay. Might be a small willingness to pay, but they typically have a willingness to pay for more sustainable uh, production. And also, corporations are fundamentally interested in profits. And we should take into, we should really keep a skeptical eye in that, in that regard. We know from large, large literature, firms are interested in profits. So also, green they see as a dimension where there's some cost to be made, Green product, and then there's benefits in the form of they will have consumers, customers that have a higher willingness to pay. And for example, there's a large literature on greenwashing that shows that companies have, an, have a tendency to try to do a little bit of green for, for a large amount of price increase if they can, because of the fact that the green is a cost dimension. So we should always keep in mind that this is where they are coming, they are coming from, and, and so we should regard, you know, we should look at their plans from that perspective. Now then about this question of, is there going to be more corporate social responsibility done in cooperation? No, in competition we see, it's a small literature still, but still, again, Aguillon is one of the recent papers, but there's more papers in various journals that show that if there's natural experiments where competition was increased, actually firms start doing more uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of green if they are in, in a more competitive environment. Also, we know that if you let companies talk to one another, and Adam Smith already has a famous quote about that, then there's risk of them colluding on other aspects as well. And here the idea is to let them argue about and agree about uh, sustainability agreements, but it's likely that that will then follow. There's a great risk that that will be followed by agreements on other aspects like production and price uh, as well. And if we then look at this a little bit more carefully, if we just you know, do a little IO model, we can do that, then we actually find that um, uh, if there's a willingness to pay, then that companies will, are going to do more in green in competition than if you allow them to make agreements on sustainability levels. So I won't go through this model in full. It's a model with uh, Yossi Spiegel that we published now several years ago. But ultimately, the idea is that firms have a profit function in which they can invest in V, which is sustainability level. Firms, con consumers then have a higher willingness to pay, and firms are going to profit maximize. And then if we look at the duopoly situation, we look at the equilibria, we can look at one equilibrium where there's competition in, in, in the sustainability level, and competition in quantity or price. We can look at equilibria where they can talk about sustainability but compete on price, or talk about uh, price and compete on sustainability, or they talk about both. And what we find, and this is actually what the policy is, right? So the policy is to let them talk about sustainability, coordinate sustainability levels, but not on price or quantity. Then what we find is it's a very strong uh, proposition that also holds if we extend, for example, to more than two firms. We find that you know, this, uh, the V level, sustainability level, under sustainability agreements is the lowest. So it's lower than the V star, which is the sustainability level 
And the reason is ultimately that the firms are uh, eliminating a dimension of competition. And so they start saving on their sustainability investments and they do benefit in the form, you know, they, they, they do benefit a little bit from the willingness to pay, but if the, you know, the costs are high enough, they're, actually it holds quite generally, then they're going to save on these costs and eliminate that dimension of competition, which is a costly dimension for them. So you should rather let them compete. And actually, if you really want to have more green done, then you should allow them a production cartel. Because as you can see, the level of green in production cartel, so not talk about sustainability, but talk about prices or quantities, then they're going to invest most. And the reason is ultimately that then they can, they can benefit from their investments fully. And so they're still competing on a sustainability level, attracting customers, but then they can benefit fully with a high price in the second stage uh, when they're colluding on price. But if you want to do that, then you need to really absolutely very strongly uh, 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 keep an eye on compensation because consumers are going to be hurt quite a bit by this. Now, that compensation requirement is hard. And this is a little graph where in, there's the sustainability level on the vertical axis and the prices on the horizontal. Consumers are, there's an indifference curve for consumers. Consumers like to be at the upper left, so higher sustainability, uh, lower price, but firms have a, have a tendency to go to the lower right. So they want higher price, lower sustainability, that's more profitable for them. And so the competition authority really has to force the companies to go to this point where, uh, the, where on, the, on the compensation curve, so on the consumer indifference curve, and the information that the competition authority would need for that is just incredibly high, and the firms would have an incentive to, uh, to try to get away with less green and a higher price. So to conclude, I think there's a risk of cartel greenwashing if we go this dimension because, because of the incentives that I explained, but also the competition authorities need an enormous amount of information. They would constantly need to be on top of this because of the incentive being wrong. So they need to bargain, it's very, they need to bargain like in the coal case, a very strong amount, a large enough amount of green. And so, uh, and then I need to keep an eye on that all the time. And for that, they need information that they typically do not have. And my final uh, comment, I fear a strong risk that, and we've, we've seen this in the chicken case in the Netherlands, that if we go this way and we say, look, companies are going to take their corporate so social responsibility in coordination with one another, sort of self-regulation, um, that, com that governments who are the first party to actually solve these issues by, by making sure that these externalities get internalized, that governments would actually have an, a further excuse not to regulate. It's exactly what we saw in the chicken. They can say, look, there's now self-regulation and we do, need to, uh, do not need to, uh, need, need to regulate it with government regulation, but whereas that would be, with these two risks, the situation would be far worse than second best. Thank you. <laughs>